The third group of theories are the phenomenological and humanistic theories. There are two key words here. Phenomenological, which means from phenomena, different phenomena. Young people are exposed to different phenomena, and phenomena are simply happenings in one's life. Whatever those happenings may be, personal, interpersonal, private, social, whatever those phenomena are, they contribute, they help to help young people learn in particular ways. And humanistic because we must live our lives in a social setting. We cannot live our lives independent, alone, on our own. We are dependent for many tasks and jobs on other individuals. And this helps us understand ourselves, our society, and others in the society in different ways. And that is what these groups of theories will be looking at. So, the phenomenological or humanistic theories focus on the whole child. They are not focused only on how the child behaves or how the child thinks. They are interested in the emotional, the physical, the spiritual, the complete development of the child. They look at the whole child because it's the whole child that is involved in a phenomena, in an event, in an happening. The whole child is part of society, not just his mind or his behaviors. And therefore, looking at the whole child, encompassing and trying to get this child to develop as a holistic individual is what the focus of these theories and theorists is. So, they look at social development, cognitive development, psychological development. They look at all aspects because you want individuals to be well-rounded in society. And today in the 21st century, it is by far even important that the child is technologically developed. There is so much technology, there's so much virtual world that the child is exposed to, that that piece must be added. How much technology or virtual reality are you exposed to? Is that enough for you? Do you need more? Do you need less? If you don't have the technological and the virtual reality at a premium or optimum level, will you succeed? Will, how will you look at yourself when, you know, when friends see their friends with high-fi, expensive digital phones today and they don't have it? It makes them look poor. It makes them look inferior. It makes them look not so good. And so how do you bridge that kind of thinking among children and among friends and among students in our classrooms? These theories study focus on human needs, attitudes, feelings, and self-awareness. Of the four terms here, two are critical. And the first one is human needs. It is important here to differentiate a need from a want. What is it that I need and what is it that I want? What I want may not be what I need, so should I get it? What I need, I need, I must have it, I will not be able to survive without it. So human needs, what do human beings need today? And yes, I think human beings today need uninterrupted Wi-Fi connections. It's critical. Do our students get it? How many of them get it? And what do they do with it? So human needs is important. When you focus on human needs, you begin to understand why people think of a need and a want as the same thing. A need is a need and a want is a want. A want can wait for some time later, but a need must be fulfilled on the spot soon. And the second key term here was self-awareness. Awareness of self. What is my perception of me? What do I think of myself? In terms of my standing in society. So am I a misfit? Do I fit well? Am I enjoying my company? Am I not enjoying my company? That self-awareness known 
also at times can lead to self-ego and self-esteem. My worth in my own eyes about me, that is critical. And that is the humanistic part of these theories.